Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. And recently we've been doing a series on returning to the office. So that's what we'll be talking about today, specifically focusing on how do you redefine office space in the office to make sure that your employee productivity is boosted and as high as possible. So that's what we'll be thinking about, how to redefine office space make it effective and efficient for the return to the office and the new post-pandemic work arrangements that we'll be all facing uh, this new world, this new experience, this new reality. Well, what we want to understand is that employees will and employers are both embracing hybrid work as the future of the office. It won't be the old Monday for Friday, nine to five. We will never go back to January 2020 however much you might wish to, we've been permanently disrupted by the pandemic and the future of the office space is going to be hybrid. That means that you really want to be focusing on creating a hybrid office space for your employees. And that comes from clear employee desires. We have many major surveys, eight major surveys from venues like the Harvard Business School, the Society for Human Resource Management and others show that over a quarter, quarter to a third of all employees want full-time remote works. They won't be, they don't want to be in the office at all. They want their home office. And the rest, the large majority of the rest, over two-thirds of all employees want hybrid schedules of one to three days in the office. And then only a small fraction, maybe 10 to 15 percent, prefer full-time in office work. So the office will see much less usage in the future, especially because large companies are already betting on the future of being hybrid and saying that they'll have their employees will be doing hybrid. Most of their employees will be doing something like one to two to no more than three days in the office. So the workspace and they'll have a number of employees who are fully remote. So the workspace of the future will mostly be at home for those employees who are not the essential employees who have to be in the workplace. Workspaces will mostly be at home to accommodate the needs of hybrid teams and fully remote workers. And that will help maximize productivity because when you look at productivity, people tend to be much, much more productive at home. You have an average increase in productivity for 10 to 14 percent for people who work from home rather than from the office, which makes sense. You don't have to spend time on the commute and security and other hassles of going to the office. And then their individual tasks, it's even higher than 10 to 14 percent because collaborative tasks, some, especially the more intense collaborative tasks, are better done in the office and your individual tasks are way better done at home. So you want to focus on individual tasks definitely at home. So most big companies are looking at this data and they are embracing the hybrid model. Now, the realities of the hybrid workspace means that you'll have to shift your office space. You'll have to make a one-time investment, significant financial investment, into changing your office space. So it will transform from individual workspace to shared space. What does that mean? Well, before the pandemic in January 2020 and beforehand, the large majority of office space was for individual usage, cubicles, offices, and so on. And we saw that about 20% was for shared usage, like video conference rooms, meeting spaces, lounges, and so on, small rooms, and 80% was for individual usage. That will have to seriously shift in the future because the people who come to the office, the overwhelming majority of the time, they'll be working on collaborative tasks. The individual tasks, their individual tasks are much better done at home. Maybe they'll be coming in for a day a week and spending a few hours and meeting with a team and maybe spending another hour to meeting with some collaborator specifically and then going home. That's what the workspace of the future will look like. And that means shared spaces. They will not be doing their individual. Work. Maybe they'll pop in to check their email or something like that. So you want to revise the vast majority of your office space to be shared collaborative spaces. That means conference rooms with great video conferencing equipment because lots of people will be doing remote work for part of the time or all the time, depending on how you have it structured, and they'll need to come in and they'll be part of the meetings. Lots and lots of meetings will be hybrid. 
not simply just everyone in person. And then you want some informal working spaces, some lounges that's going to be good for collaborative work. And then you want some smaller meeting rooms, so larger meetings rooms, then you want some training spaces, of course, like that. And of course, you do want to maintain some office space for leaders who need to have private conversations. But the reality is that that will be relatively little of the office space. So you want one third of your office space, maybe individual, two thirds collaborative, and the individual office space will include some shared desks. So floating desks, whatever you want to call it. Maybe with each team assigned to a couple of computers for when they need to pop in so that they have their software, whatever they need for their team. And then the rest of the computers can be for whoever wants to use them for any period of time. The benefit of that for companies is that you'll have much lower expenses. Why is that? Well, because you need much less office space because you'll have much less occupancy. Now, maybe something like 20% of your office space needs to be fixed. The basic office space that's needed for those C-suite and leadership offices with private doors, those financing things that you want to take care of. And of course, some companies will be manufacturing companies will need facilities, maybe some R&D work will need to have those that separate space. So maybe 20, 10 to 30% of your previous space will need to still be there. The rest of the space, 80% is based on occupancy. And if you have people coming in only an average of, let's say, one day a week, then you'll only have 20% of the occupancy that you had before the pandemic. So you can get rid of most of your office space. You can get rid of 60% of your office space. So you'll save a lot on real estate. And that'll be a savings of per year. It's not going to be a one-time savings. You'll have a one-time investment into remaking, revising your office space to be much more shared. But you'll have savings throughout, going throughout. So that's great. And then you'll have to save on office services and products, so whether it's security, janitorial services, large commercial printers, all of that stuff. So there'll be a lot of savings. And so you want to think about how you will cut that office space and how you will reduce it by anticipating what the actual space needs will be. Conduct surveys to identify employees preferred in office days so that you know when they'll be coming in and have team members, everyone come in on the same day. So come coordinate, come in the same day. If they're doing one day, come in the same two days. If they're doing two days, so that all the team members are there at once. And then have different teams come in mostly on different days so that you don't have everyone coming in, I don't know, on a Tuesday and then have more of, new, require a lot of office space. So coordinate so that folks come in on different days and you have approximately equal, reasonably equal distribution throughout the week. And then you will be able to decide, okay, how much office space do I need when you assess that regular usage as well as I need some irregular usage. So things like cross-functional teams, if they need to meet. So think about those cross-functional teams, what's happening in your organization, how often they need to meet, what they do. Trainings, you're going to be holding trainings and some of them will be in person. So you'll want to be thinking about, okay, trainings, large trainings, small trainings, how much do they need? Then mass events, so keynotes, whatever, large co, you know, those quarterly retreats for your teams, those are the kinds of things I'm talking about. And one of the things you wanted to want to consider is doing a co-working space for overflow needs. So you have some establish a contract with a co-working venue for overflow needs or for some of your workers who want to go to the co-working space and work there. Then you want to be thinking about the office in a broad sense. Your office is now going to be in your employees' offices. So you want to make sure that they are as productive and comfortable as they can be in their home offices. And so you are responsible for their home offices. They'll be doing the large majority of their individual tasks in their home offices and some collaborative tasks in their home offices. They'll be spending the large majority of their, the majority at least of their time working for your company in their home office. So that becomes part of your responsibility. You want to make sure that they're as productive and comfortable as possible. So you want to allocate funding for hotspot plans, various in the various good quality internet for membership fees for co-working space. So that can be part of the contract. You want nice ergonomic furniture. You want good technology. Remember, 
they are not bothered if they have bad video cameras and bad microphones and bad lighting. It's their team members that are bothered and their supervisors. You don't want that to happen. So an annual fund of two to 3,000 works pretty well depending on the cost of living in their area. And so then you also want to think about working parents. Working parents, research shows, require more funding for childcare needs. So uh, another 500 yearly for them would be very helpful. You also want to be thinking about the risks involved here. Now, your risks previously were concentrated on your offices. That was your main source of, of risk for physical risk for your company. Now that risk will be disaggregated, geographically distributed. Some benefits to that, you know, you won't have a hurricane wiping away your office and having a lot of trouble after that. But you will also have more frequent events happening, especially since your employees' offices aren't as hardened. So you want to help your employees be more safe at home, have risk management and business continuity planning as include their home offices as part of what you need to do and what you need to think about and what you need to manage in order to manage your risks most effectively. All right, so this is how you redefine this future hybrid office space to make sure that your employee productivity is as good as possible. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please follow us on YouTube, on iTunes, where we have both a video cast and a podcast. Please subscribe to those. That would be very helpful. Share it on social media. Share word with your friends. And we'd love to hear from you about what you thought about this podcast episode. So please email me at gleb, G-L-E-B, at disasteravoidanceexperts.com with your thoughts. Again, gleb at disasteravoidanceexperts.com with your thoughts, and you can also leave them in comments and reviews. There will be a lot more information about redefining office space in the blog and other information that's linked in the show notes, so check those out. I hope you've benefited from this episode, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Until then, until then the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends.